I've just purchased this compressor from sgsengineering.com. It's model number SC50V. It's a twin cylinder compressor, delivers 14.6 cubic feet per minute and it's got a 50 litre receiver with a 3 horsepower motor. And in this video I'm just going to take it out of the box and show you any assembly that's required. Just a quick look at the information on the box. You need to be aware that it weighs 45 kilograms when it's packaged, its net weight is 42 kilograms, so just be aware that it's fairly heavy. So I've removed the compressor from the box, it wasn't an easy process, it's quite awkward to get out. One thing I need to point out is that you need to use this handle at the front of the compressor. If I come round to this side you can see there's a handle there on the back of the receiver. So use that and that to pull it out of the box, but like I said it's not particularly easy. As well as a compressor, inside the box we've got two wheels. These fit on either side at the back here. Two rubber feet, they fit on either side at the front of the compressor. We've got a vent plug for the oil filling point, a spare gasket and I'll show you where that goes in a second. Two air filters, one for each cylinder and a set of instructions. That's everything that comes in the box. The gasket is for this end plate here. So the spare gasket is there so that you can actually take the end plate off and replace it if you need to. And then on the very top of here, there's a plug. Got to pull the plug out and it is a really tight fit. The vent plug just pushes in there. There are two O-rings that seal it, just push it all the way in and that's the vent plug fitted. In order to make it easy to fit the wheels and the little rubber feet, I've chopped the compressor up on two pieces of wood. So let me start off with the rubber feet. So we've got the rubber foot, a bolt, two washers and a nut. Take the bolt, one of the washers and slide that down through the hole that's in this fixing here. Now you'll notice that the rubber foot has got a hollow centre that goes to the bottom, not the top. So that should be facing downwards. Slide that rubber foot up and over the bolt. So use two fingers and your thumb to hold the bolt down and the rubber foot up and then slide the washer in and this is quite fiddly so that's the washer in on the tip of your finger slide it up until you feel it actually touching the bolt and then turn the bolt from the top so you can see now that the nut is located on the thread of the bolt and then we're just going to tighten that up by hand so it's a 13 millimeter nut and bolt I've got a 13 millimeter spanner I'm just going to put that on the bolt at the top there and then I'm just going to nip it up with this socket wrench. That seems fine. So that's the first one done, I'll do the same thing on the other side but I won't film it because it's the same process. So next I'm going to fit the wheels. So the elongated moulding on the wheel goes to this side. So what we've got to do is take the spindle, push it through the side that is not elongated. If I put that over to the side you'll see what that looks like. Then we put a washer on the threaded part, push it into the hole, we get another plain washer, put that through from the back, then the spring washer and then the nut. So I'm tightening that now, that's only hand tight. Right, so what I'll do now is I'll take you around the back so that you can see exactly what I've done. Wheel, spindle, push the spindle through the wheel. I've still got the two plain washers, the spring washer and the nut. Take one plain washer, Put that over the threaded part of the spindle, push the spindle into the hole on the bracket, plain washer, spring washer and then screw the nut on. This is fairly simple really, it's not difficult to do. So that's hand tight and then just nip it up with your socket wrench and spanner. Make sure it spins freely, there's a little bit of play on that, that's perfectly normal. So that's the wheels and the two little rubber legs assembled. The next part of the process is to connect the two air filters onto each of the cylinders. So you can see there's a plastic fitting the same as the one that was on the oil connection there. The air filters just screw into there, one on either side. So I'm trying to make sure that I don't cross the thread because I don't want to damage these things. There we go. There's some resistance, but you can see that that is not causing any problems to the filter. So I'm going to screw that all the way in until the thread finishes, which is about there. I'm going to do the same on the other side, but I won't bother filming it. 
Next we need to make sure that there's enough oil in the compressor and if I swing my torch around can you see that red dot there that's in the middle of that circle? But you can see where that oil level is, it's got to be in the middle of the red dot and that's perfectly fine, you can see there's enough oil in the unit. So that's it, the assembly's completed, I've fitted the wheels and the rubber feet, I've fitted the vent on the oil reservoir and I've put the filters on the compressor cylinders. So that's us ready to go now, I'm ready to start it. Now I don't suggest that you start this machine up on a workbench, the only reason I'm doing that is so that I can actually film it easier. But we're ready to go, let's see if it works. This red button at the top is on the pressure switch which turns the compressor on and off as it reaches pressure. All I've got to do to start the machine is to pull this up. And to stop it you just press it down. So that's the assembly completed. I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it useful. Thank you very much for watching and please take care.